What's up everybody? Welcome to this new video. I'm very excited to share that with you because what's more interesting than to compare things out of the same time? So Beethoven and Clementi, two giant composers in his time. Don't underestimate Clementi. He was really one of the pillars of composition and piano playing. He lived a very long life and we have two prestissimos for you to compare. What is a prestissimo to start with? It's actually very easy. It's the fastest tempo indication you're gonna have. But just to give you an impression of how difficult it is to decide what is as fast as possible, I share with you some video tracks just to give you an impression how much difference there can be. And in between, let's pretend that I am now someone on mainstream performance or mainstream hip even. Man, that's really slow. It's boring. I would guess that they cycled faster in those days. Two lengths then back to... No, still not prestissimo. Oh, no boy, it's not, not fast. Yeah, I know they consider to be that to be fast, but it's not fast, believe me. Oh man, those cars were slow. That's not prestissimo. Is that as fast as you can imagine? Next. Gets ahead of Valtteri Bottas. Sebastian Vettel just hangs back, but the Ferraris have already gone. <sighs> Getting more closely, but still, that's not prestissimo. It is not slow. I can, I, I cannot deny it's fast, but it's not prestissimo. Come on, and do you have something else? It had two or three iffy missions. Well, this is coming close, but, but I feel I missed something. I, I guess there is still something faster. Warp drive, Mr. Scott. Well, that's fast. That That is what we should strive for. That's prestissimo. It's really the fastest you have. So guys, it's not to make jokes with anyone. I mean, that's of course not my purpose, but it puts things into a perspective because what is prestissimo? Again, if you read the sources, it's very easy and very clear. It's the last tempo indication you have. Even Clementi in his piano school is writing about prestissimo. Actually, it's not writing, it's just giving all the tempo, Italian tempo words and prestissimo is number 20 there. So, so what's then the thing to compare a Clementi prestissimo with a Beethoven sonata? And it's the Opus 2 number 1 that I'm going to share. Last movement is prestissimo, same time signature. The Beethoven piece is F minor, Clementi is the A major sonata that I have been recording lately. And it is, of course, an other texture. You could say the Beethoven sonata is a little bit more dense. Maybe the Clementi should be a little bit more faster even. But again, as fast as possible. What does that mean? I believe there is something in our judgment still present that makes us judge and makes us um, feel a kind of limit. So I was recording a Clementi sonata lately and I will share, share some bars with you. It's a prestissimo last part of an A major sonata. A few days ago I've uploaded that but interestingly enough if you don't know this piece and I guess many of you if you haven't heard the recording already it's not a piece that you probably will not be familiar with and during the live stream several people will were chatting and you can still check it out I will link the live stream here hey man this is really fast does it need to be so fast it's prestissimo so what do you want you can play it even faster but still the people who didn't know the music say I feel a little bit on the edge of being easy with the music, which by the way might be the meaning of prestissimo. So if you have the same impression now that this is really fast, compare the tempo with the piece you do know very well. And that's a Beethoven sonata opus 2 number 1 F minor, F minor. So again, Clementi, I used kind of this tempo might be a little bit slower for I don't know I haven't checked but it's somewhat in the range of this let's 
let's now just take that tempo and implement that on the beat when you get this tempo. <laughs> the same. The only difference is that we really are really familiar with this Beethoven piece and that of course makes us judge the tempo very differently. So if I make the case sometimes of going back to what the people in the time really uh, 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 suggested us as a tempo and there apply the double beat because that's not a video here about double beat and single beat use of the metronome but in single beat use is unplayable and nobody is doing that for the fast movements, certainly not. It's unreachable, it's warp speed. Even for the allegro movements, it's even then warp speed. That makes my point a little bit. And I was thinking about that just by playing unknown music. It still is fresh to us. It still has this feeling, well, I, I don't know what's coming, so please slow down a little bit. So in this prestissimo, I might have been on the edge of even playing too fast in Clementi because there was a reaction I got from someone in the audience, several people. And applying that to Beethoven, what should, what should that teach us? Shouldn't we consider to be our original tempo feel with pieces we don't know or we hear for the first time? Shouldn't we take that feeling to those other, to the other music? And I can say you, I can tell you a world will open. Let's now, as a final thing here of this video, because I'm just touching upon some elements, we could dive into this for hours and days and probably will make more videos on this over the course of the next years even. But let's take a metronome that certainly is correct, which is my beautiful early 18th, 19th century metronome here and see what Jenny has written about this Beethoven piece. He has given several tempi, ranging from 104 to 120 for the half note. Moses has given 1.8 for the half note. Let's make the aperture of 112 between 14, 120, 1.8, 112. So that is this tempo. That's this tempo. So just skipping the single beat, we're going to double beat, is this tempo. immediately recognizing that it is slightly slower. So this, this would fit perfectly into what people were saying in the chat. I, that this is, to their feeling, very fast. Let's go to the Beethoven. By the way, I can play these trills. Just touching up on this element of comparison between those two pieces and to leave you with this idea only that think to think about the fact that Clementi and Beethoven tempos have no relationship with each other that's something you should forget in that time there was something like a tradition that today we've lost that tradition but the tempo of denario so I mean the prestissimo kind of feeling a legal kind of feeling was similar. I don't, I'm not saying here that it was exactly the same, but it was about the same. If you compare the metronome numbers, not talking here about single beat, double beat, just the metronome numbers given by people from Czerny, Hummel, Morschlis, and uh, Ferdinand Ries, you name it, they are all in the same line. Some of those editions, like the Czerny Beethoven editions and the Morschlis 
uh, Beethoven editions, they were made simultaneously, so they didn't know from each other what kind of metronome numbers they were giving, and still they are in the same line. Even Moschlitz is commenting on that in the translation on, of the Beethoven biography by Schindler. I've shared some episodes with you on that book. So there is not such thing as a Clementi Prestissimo or a Beethoven Prestissimo. There might be slight differences, but there is an overall tradition. So that's with this idea, with this thought, I'm going to leave you and to reflect maybe about this issue and perhaps dive into your library of music, take some music you don't know and compare that, the tempi we would take for those pieces with the pieces you really know and that might open a perspective, a new window. And that's really interesting because that ties into what this channel is all about. And actually my whole journey, my whole life as a musician is about is exploring this music as much as possible from a fresh perspective, taking other perspectives just to discover new things. And hopefully that inspires you. And if that's the case, love to have you subscribe to this channel. And then we see each other very soon again. Thanks for watching. Bye.